Hi, I'm Danielle Hartman. Welcome to another episode of Board in PA. Without dedicated homebrew hobbyists with dreams of going pro, breweries in Pennsylvania would look nothing like they do today. Homebrew Con, the one-of-a-kind conference for home brewers, chose Pittsburgh as their host city in 2022. Let's take a look at what Homebrew Con had to offer and the perspective of all things beer from an array of Pennsylvania home brewers. We are at the convention center in Pittsburgh. We have more than a thousand people here for the world's largest, the largest homebrew gathering and competition. 44 years strong, and I am surrounded by amazing people, beginners to advanced brewers that are literally taking the hobby of homebrewing to the next level. I'm the executive director of the American Homebrewers Association, and we put on this conference as a national organization, busy representing interests for homebrewers, frankly, all across the world annually bringing everyone together to convene at their national conference is more than just a tradition. You come out transformed on the other side and we go to different areas of the country. To come to your backyard in Pennsylvania and be in Pittsburgh is a true honor. There's more than 60 homebrew clubs in this state. There's more than 30 homebrew shops in this state. And the hobby of homebrewing is alive and well in Pennsylvania. This? Yeah, hold. I like how you held that beer up. Hold that beer up for me. Oops. It was very strange how I began to brew. I love cooking, and I could never find alcohol to match the food I was making. And I started brewing all these moonshines, and I started blending wines, and I started making wine smoothies. And I said, I need to start making my own beer. So I bought a book on beer read the book. I said, oh my God, you got to be a scientist to do this stuff. They started talking about hydrometers, refractometers, water got to be a certain way, how important cleanliness is. And I threw the book in the closet. And a year and a half later, something said, make beer. I went to Ruffle Brewing, that's what they was called. It was in the back of a flower shop and I bought my first kits. And after I brewed the two kits, I built my own mash twin. Uh, about a month and a half after I started brewing, I was writing my own recipes. I love the part of just being creative. Um, I'm an artist. I'm a musician. I'm a chef, I own the restaurant. I love to create. I'm trying to be more vocal I'm trying to bring more African Americans into this. There's a lot of opportunities in the beer business. It doesn't have to be with the production, it can be with the arts, the creative end of it, the marketing, um, it's sales and service. And a lot of people are not familiar with craft, but they're, they're, they're warming up to it. I actually was the typical Corona uh, Heineken drinker. And one day I had went out with a couple of buddies from work and I ordered a beer. It was like a craft brew house and I ordered like a Corona or something. And it was like the record stopped. Everybody turned around and looked at me, one of those deals. And so the first craft beer I actually tried was a Bell's Two Hearted. And from there it just took off for me. I, I loved IPAs. And now I'm starting to explore in different styles. I started out through Dave Bracey. He was just flooding me with emails about different opportunities to work at breweries. And one day he gave me Inner Grooves information and it was just organic, man. And I started off as a server. And from there, they already knew that I had the intentions of learning how to brew. From there, I just went straight to the back of the house and I was the assistant brewer. Marcus was honestly a diamond in the rough. We hired him for front of house and he came in to hire for to work in the tap room pouring beer and then we found out he was home brewing and he was excited and interested in learning more in the back and he went to Point Park College for a, a program they have there so as soon as we had an opening in the back he was the first person um, we moved back there and we're super excited to see where he goes and and you know, help him get to where he is. And it's exciting to be part of that and to, to watch people grow into something that's a dream, like you know, something that we, we did ourselves. So it's fun. So Windy Bridges, obviously it comes from Chicago, which is the windy part, and the bridge is obviously Pittsburgh. So it's my transitioning from me leaving Chicago and moving to Pittsburgh. So that's why I have the uh, 16th Street Bridge 
with the Chicago skyline behind it. So I'm actually in the works of trying to open my own brewery. Um, I'm looking in different areas, mostly the Moroville area. There's just no breweries out that way. So I think there's a demand for some good beer out there. Black owned breweries in general is, is under 1%. You know, and we, we consume it, but we don't produce it. So I want to be able to produce an affordable beer for one, and for two, be able to educate and, and uh, have people learn what craft beer is all about. I get requests all the time. Hey, why don't you make this? Why don't you make that? And I'm like, yeah, it's not that easy. <laughs> and even if I do do that, you gotta wait like a month to get it, at least. So it's like, oh, you get to drink and do this. And it's like, no, it's, it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. Like you, I'm checking levels every day. Like before you guys came, I ch had to check my uh, my OG graphic. So it's like you, you're constantly checking and constantly doing all types of chemistry and math. And so if you're not good at that, stay away from that. <laughs> Home brewing is somewhat of the world's first hobby that then brought us commercial or professional brewing. Um, and it's really changed over the years in terms of involvement of how you brew, technology available. We're in the Homebrew Expo Hall where you can walk around and see equipment that you might not have seen five, ten years ago, giving homebrewers access to what the professionals might brew but on a much smaller scale. What's hot in homebrewing right now is systems that are not just a separate boil kettle to a mash ton, but one unit. So we continue to see trends on the hardware side. We also see trends on ingredient side. Access to, in this hall, there's got experimental hops that are available not just to pro brewers, but to commercial brewers. If you're going to walk around here, you're gonna taste beers too. I'm here with my club and we're going to be pouring at uh, club night tomorrow night. We're the Band of Media Brewers, uh, established in 2016. We're located in Delaware County. We meet third Thursday of every month at Sterling Pig Brewery and Media. We do a variety of things. We, we bring in guest speakers to talk about brewing techniques and ingredients and things like that. Bus trips to local breweries, club competition that we do over the course of the year, and a lot of our members also participate in uh, BJCP sanctioned competitions. It's a great club, a wide range of people from absolute beginners to people who've moved on to become professionals. I started the way I think a lot of people start. My wife bought me an extract kit, and so I brewed extract beers on my stove top for quite a while. You know, kind of hit a plateau and wasn't really happy with my beers. They weren't getting any better. So I was at a local uh, homebrew store uh, buying ingredients one day and got talking to the owner and he suggested the club. And so I went to the first meeting and got hooked and I've been involved ever since. And uh, graduated into all grain brewing from there. And it's, you know, it's been a really good experience for me. It's certainly being a part of the club has made me a uh, much better brewer than I was when I first joined. Well, I don't know, I think most people are legitimately interested when you tell them you're a home brewer and they, they want to try it. And then it's funny, most people are legitimately surprised that it's drinkable. That's the cool thing about the hobby is, you know, even from the start, if you're doing extract kits, if you're following the directions and you're careful with your sanitation, you can make really good drinkable beer. What's hard is going from that level to making something really exceptional. I really like the science of it. I, I'm a total science nerd, you know, so I read the textbooks and the, you know, the academic articles that really go down in the weeds. And I think I've learned a lot and probably improved as a brewer by reading that. There's a lot of guys in the club who couldn't care less about that stuff. They just want to make beer because it's cool to make beer. So I think you get a continuum of people, right? There's a lot of different reasons you get into it. I mean, the camaraderie is great. Everybody in the club is very friendly. We, we love getting together at the meetings. I think it's a, the highlight of the month for everybody just to get together and socialize and, and share your homebrew. It's, it's, it's just fun. One of the true gems of this conference, the Homebrew Con, is Club Night. We've got more than 45 clubs that have come across the country to impress each other and serve each other's beers that they brewed. There's gonna be costumes, there's gonna be decorated areas where we're drinking those beers. 
club night will be amazing. And then on Saturday, we have more talks, 45 talks, by the way, going on at Homebrew Con. And then the end of Saturday will be the award ceremony for the National Homebrew Competition. This is where we will announce more than 40 categories of winners, bronze, silver, gold, for the best homebrewers in the world that compete head to head. And meanwhile, during this conference is the judging for the National Homebrew Competition going on behind the scenes. So we're at the 2022 National Homebrew Convention. It's in Pittsburgh for the first time. This is the biggest thing in the nation, some say in the world, for homebrewing. Um, and it's right in our backyard, so we're loving it. We get to serve a club night, and we get to uh, pour a collab we did with a local brewery leaning cask here on the kickoff party. Yeah, so we're excited to, not only that it's just here, but we get to be so involved. We're members of both Trash and Trube. The club scene was very popular before the pandemic, and then we basically shut everything down for two years. And we ramped them back up at the end of last summer. And since opening up, we're getting a, a ton of new members, uh, people moving into the area, joining. Uh, it's growing more and more. We're trying to find, like, get back out and do club activities together. Uh, more women are showing up. We have more minorities showing up, and that's kind of, we, we want more women, more minorities, make a more diverse club is kind of our goal right now. Yeah, in the beginning, a lot of the first meetings we went to for a while, I was usually the only woman there. So now we're getting, we've gotten a lot more couples. I think other people are getting involved. A lot of people came in from out of town that moved in, so that's helping. <laughs> I would say demographic-wise, we continue to want to see more women homebrewing. We have about 20% women at this national conference. That's very encouraging. We continue to want to invite women to, to know that homebrewing is accessible to you as well. Join us on the internet to find resources, join a homebrew club but you should be welcome wherever you go. I've been brewing since my 20s. I'm proud to be a woman identified individual in this space saying women are here to lead in homebrewing and they are already doing it. We just want more of you. So here at uh, HomebrewCon 2022 in uh, Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, very excited to uh, host this year. It's bringing a bunch of dedicated uh, homebrewers and craft beer fans and uh, with the booming scene that we have here in Pittsburgh with over 46 uh, breweries just in Allegheny County. It's a great opportunity for all these folks to uh, learn more about homebrewing and then also come out and uh, try some great uh, local craft beer. Speaking from experience, I started out as a home brewer. I know a lot of other professional brewers started out as home brewers, and so we have a, a deep connection with folks who, uh, you know, seeked out great beer by brewing it at home. And so a lot of us went on the professional side. A lot of people still love doing it as a hobby, and so it's always great to kind of have that shared experience and that shared bond, uh, especially talking about it over a beer. I happen to be holding the um, commemorative beer, so if you come to a conference and secret little bit will be in San Diego next year, June 22nd um, for 2023. You always get a commemorative beer. And what this was done is a Kolsch style ale from Grist House Brewing. They collaborated with local home brewers to make this. And you are proudly given this as a gift just for attending this amazing conference on top of all the talks and networking and learning. So I'm, I'm looking forward to drinking this. So my brewery, Grist House, we uh, did the commemorative beer, which is a, a Kolsch uh, that we brewed that uh, all the attendees uh, received. And then also through the Brewers Guild, uh, we uh, put together a special edition of our Pittsburgh Brewery Guide. And so all the attendees are receiving that. They're going around and uh, getting stamps uh, at some of the local breweries and coming back and claiming the prize. So it's a nice iteration for folks who are in town from all over the country to get out and experience some of the craft beer here in Pittsburgh. Super good question is, how do I start home brewing? We want you to join us. We have resources for you. We give you reasons to brew and ways and how to brew. Homebrewersassociation.org is your first step. It's the hub of all things home brewing. We invite you to try an entry level amber ale recipe. We take you through the steps in video, and then we progress you with hundreds of recipes available to you. The city of Pittsburgh has been incredible. Visit Pittsburgh will be here speaking on main stage tonight during day one and the headline speaking. We have um, city bus tours took everyone. 80 people went on brewery tours last night. Pittsburgh, what a downtown area to walk in. I've been jogging. I visited the confluence of the two amazing rivers, including the Ohio River. This is a city with history in beer, Iron City beer. We have history here and we are acknowledging that by bringing the National Conference to this city.
That's all the time we have for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cheers.